So on today's show, I had to bring in an expert on this particular tool that I wanted to talk about because while Chuck has tons of experience in communications and stuff, I don't have a whole bunch of experience in security and fire alarm, and that's what this tool is really designed for. Don't hang up that phone. We've found what you're looking for. Welcome to the Let's Talk Cabling Podcast with Chuck Bowser, RCDD. Well, seeing how we're pulling Category 6A, the most powerful twisted pair in the world, you got to ask yourself this one question. Did I pull 295 or 300 feet? Well, do you feel lucky? Do you punk? In this podcast, you'll learn the differences between a 66 and 110 punch tool, the proper way to install a support cable, along with testing and certifying the cable. What exactly does RCDD stand for? Registered Communications Distribution Designer. Just the expert, you need to ensure your cable plant performs exactly as designed. The elite professional, knowledgeable, and experienced in leading edge ICT design principles. So join us as we talk about the ever-changing world of telecommunications. From ISP to OSP, from copper to fiber, design to installation. Now, send the new guy to the truck for a bucket of dial tone and the cable stretchers while you listen to an informative program on telecommunications. So today, we have with us David Lopez from Tempo Communications. Welcome, David. Hey, good morning, Chuck. How you doing today? I'm, I'm doing pretty well. Doing pretty so, well. Had my coffee. I'm ready to roll. I've got my I've got my water in the cup that my daughter gave me for Father's Day. Oh, nice. Uh, it nice. helps when you have the thing open. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to a cup with a lid, which hence why I have all kinds of stains on my shirts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe that's why she gave me that cup. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't know. So, in case you haven't told, kept figured out yet, I have ADD. <laughs> I tend to go on sidetrack sometimes. So today I want to talk to you about, well, first off, before we talk about the tool, tell us, for those who may not heard of Tempo Communications or you, tell us, give us a little background about both of them. Okay. Well, Tempo is a manufacturer of test equipment for the telecom industry. And by telecom, I mean um, uh, anything associated with uh, telephone, um, cable TV. Uh, we're now branching into um, also into uh, cell phone technology, uh, Wi-Fi, and in addition, and all the copper cabling associated with that. Then I also mentioned Wi-Fi, which you're talking over, you know, wireless type of communication. And we have some products now rolling out that can be used with uh, cell phone, wireless cell phone technology, and also uh, a whole tool line associated with fiber optics and fiber optics touched so many beyond just telecom. There's so many utilities that use that for signaling type of applications, but we have a lot of um, a fiber optic tool line as well as all these tools associated with uh, copper telecom. We make everything from small hand tools, tones and probes, locators, uh, fusion spicers and power meters in the fiber optic side. We go all the way up to uh, a device that can test Metro ethernet. Uh, in large ethernet, um, wide area network type of application. So very broad range of products, uh, test equipment associated with telecom. Uh, as far as myself, I've um, literally two weeks ago was my 25th anniversary of working with Tempo. I originally started with the company as a bench repair technician. Um, our flagship product at that time was a unit called the Sidekick which has been used extensively in the US and Canada and Europe for landline telephone troubleshooting. Um, anybody listening here, if they've had a landline telephone and it had some type of service done to it within the last 30 years, it stands an extremely high chance the technician used a sidekick to work on it. Um, from there, I moved into uh, marketing and as a, what was then associate product manager, and then had, was uh, kind of involved with technical support, did technical support for, oh gosh, 13, 14 years, and recently uh, took on this uh, new position I have, which is called an uh, um, application sales engineer. 
I support the sales group with pre and post sale. I either tell the customer how awesome the product is and they need to buy it, or after they buy it, I show them how awesome it is by training them on how to use it. Nice. Nice. So you guys, you guys have wireless testers as well for like testing wireless routers and stuff. We do. We do. We have, a, um, it's more of testing coverage and testing, um, upstream and downstream speeds. We have two products. We have a product called the air scout, which tests coverage area. And then we have one that's called the giga check, which is, can is predominantly for upstream and downstream speed testing, but can also do some coverage testing as well. We're gonna have to do a future show about that because I get hit with a lot of wireless questions. And I, I do have some wireless experience, but I've never really used a wireless tester. It either just worked or it didn't work, right? So we'll have to, we'll have to do a future <laughs> show about that. But today I wanna to focus sure. on, I, I was, I don't know where I came across this. You guys are, are really good about your social media presence, especially I was expecting to see Tempo Bob in today's thing. So I don't know what happened. Tempo I guess I don't Bob rank was... to have Temple Bob come visit me. But... I could give him a call and he could come just pop it in here. That, that would be cool to have him show up in a show. <laughs> anyway, so you, you guys are pretty good at your social media stuff. And you guys did a post about a toner and probe specifically for the security and fire alarm. Now, as I'm going to preface this whole conversation so everybody knows this. Chuck is an old cable dog. I pull cable. I terminate voice and data cable. When it comes to security and fire alarm, I know very little. So when I looked at this tool, it looked a lot different than a regular toner and probe. I'm like, well, why? Why is it? Why is it different? And, and one of the things I noticed right out of the right out of the gate when I watched your unboxing video on the on the Tempo website is it comes with metal or plastic tips. What's the difference between this two and what would be the applications for them? Okay. The, the plastic and the metal tips on the tone probe that actually goes back into telecom applications. So that the tone probe that comes with it, the 200 EP dash G um, it's, it comes with several kits. It, it originally was designed to be used with what's called our 701 K dash G tone and probe kit, which is just has, numerous applications in the copper cabling world. And we included those tips. The, the plastic tips are obviously they're insulated. The probes protected, I believe up to 300 volts. So if you happen to, the wiring happens to be crossed up with electrical, you're protected against uh, getting any arcing or shorting. Older tone and probes before the 200 EP dash G going back into the early seventies and to the sixties and even back to the fifties, they had metal tips on them, um, very much not electrically safe. If you probed around your electrical, you could get an arc and that's not, not good. But another uh, function of that tip, the reason why it's still included is if your cabling happens to go into old 66 blocks, which I'm sure you're familiar with. So there's two metal posts that the wires terminate onto, a wire pair terminates onto you can short those two posts out to each other using that metal tip. And when you do that, the tone should stop because if the wire pair is shorted, um, the tone, uh, it, it's created a load, the tone gets dissipated at that load, no tone. So it's a way to verify that you are on the correct wire pair by using that metal tip. 99% of the time, like I said, about the only application nowadays is if you're dealing with the 66 block. Other yeah, than I can remember back when we were doing, uh, I'm, I'm going to show my age here, 1A2 key phone systems. And they had a, they had uh, one pair for lamp, another one for the phone and, and all different kinds of stuff. Yeah. And if you hit it the wrong way with a toner, you could cause some problems. You really <laughs> could. So I, that kind of confirms what I was thinking. I was thinking that the, uh, that the plastic tip was probably so you don't accidentally short something. So I, I was, when I saw that, I envisioned this. Okay, so I'm toning out something. I'm inside a fire alarm cabinet with a circuit board and stuff like that. I, I, I guess I got to be kind of careful with not grounding something out. I've never even thought about that's a way to verify that you're on the right cable. That's actually a, that's a great point. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Um, another thing I noticed is the the, the nose the, the nose clips. They they seem uh -huh. to be different than on a regular or, or an older style toner. Am, am I correct in that? Yeah, the the clips that are on there. Um, there's actually, uh, we do have them on a few other tone generators. 
those are just your standard basic electronics alligator clips. Um, and the reason we include them on this unit is because uh, you kind of have a crossover with um, alarm systems. You both, it interfaces with telephone, but then it also has a lot to do with electrical. The telephone type of connectors that are on there, the what are, you know, there's several nicknames for them, popper clips. Um, that's the one I've learned. Um, five-way telecom clips, piercing bed and nails clips. They're big. They, you know, they have a lot of surface area. And just as you were mentioning, you're getting into a security panel. There's a lot of other electronics in there. Having all that exposed metal on that clip can be, you know, can be a liability. You can end up shorting something out. So we went with the smaller electronic styles with the large insulation boot on it. So you have a, a minimal amount of metal exposed when you're connecting it to the wires that you're trying to tone. Yeah, the um... Or to test too. You mentioned that they the have many names. That's our industry, period. Our industry has, you, you pick up any particular tool or any particular thing, and there's a oh, four yeah. or five names for it, depending on where you are in the country or how old that particular person yeah. is. It's just our industry. And same thing with acronyms. Our industry loves acronyms. Oh, yeah. And, and the I, only thing I it tell loves anybody that I train, I said that if I said the, the telecom world, telephone in particular, I said if you were in the military, you, you got an advantage. There's so many acronyms and nicknames for all this stuff. <laughs> it's like the military. Yes. And the only thing our industry loves more than acronyms is it loves changing acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Another thing I noticed about this particular tool. So when you look at a regular toner probe, right? So you have the, it has three, it's a, it's a three-way switch. Off, tone, mm -hmm. continuity. This one had Correct. a lot more options and some of the options, I have no idea what they are. Can you run through those and tell us what they do? Sure, sure. I, you know what, I need to pull up, make sure I am seeing the right things with it too. So the two most, uh, there's a tone position that's on there. That's obviously for sending tone. There's also what's called um, normally open and normally closed. Uh, and then normally open latch and normally closed latch. In the security world, um, there is, uh, you're talking about little sensors that are usually magnetic sensors and you'll have two of them. Um, a normally open would be that those two sensors are apart from each other and if they cross path, that creates a short or a, a small burst of current which then triggers the alarm or they're right over the top of each other and that when that circuit opens up, then it, stops the current stops flowing and triggers the alarm the normally open and normally closed and the two latching functions those are for testing the wiring associated that's con or that's connected to those two type of sensors um, because if it's a normally opened one you could set it to normally open and when it shouldn't go off if the the and it has a the tone will go off on the on the tone generator or on the 620k um, if it happens to alarm when it's supposed to be normally open, then you know you have a short in the cabling. The latch function, and then and it's just the opposite for the normally closed. The latch function is if you're troubleshooting something that is an intermittent type of fault. So that where it comes in for a short bit, but then it goes back to normally functioning. With the latch, as soon as it does whatever the opposite is of the function you're in, the alarm on the thing will go off and it'll keep on going. And there's a small reset button on the side of the unit that's specifically for turning off when that alarm is going off in the latch mode. Um, that makes sense? Is that it, yeah, no, it does actually. Um, so if a, if a technician's out there and they only have just the, the regular toner and probe, and then they start venturing into the security and alarm, can they do the mm -hmm. same functions with their older toner? Or is this, are these functions that only the, uh, the 620K can do? The, the latch function are the normally open, normally closed, and the latching tests, those can only be done with a 620. Um, you can kind of do some variation with it with our 77 HP tone generators and some of the other ones. Um, you could connect it to a normally open one and open it up. Um, no, because the, it, no. you could do it the, with a continuity test on those those units, um, it would just be a little bit more difficult. The gotcha. little, the alarm on it's really loud. 
it's it's actually louder than what you'd get to on the continuity what the the continuity tone on a regular tone generator i was going to ask you that question too because when i watched that unboxing video it's and i don't remember exactly how it it stated it but it said something to the effect that led me to believe that the the tone was louder than a normal toner and i was going to ask that question yeah the regular that the tone they're referring to would be the tone that happens the alarm tone that happens when you're using the latch functions the tone function on it for sending tone across the pair that's that's the same tone generator we have in all of the the tone gen or all the other models of tone generator gotcha gotcha um so another thing i saw when i watched that video because I, I like i'm i'm a youtube ha addict i'm always watching youtube videos especially if it's about telecom um it said that that toner could test for intermittent faults how's it testing yeah. for intermittent faults that that's the the latching functions the normally closed and normally open latching functions and that if it you would have to physically go along to the wire as the technician and you know fiddle with it or do something move a window move a door move whatever it is that the sensors are attached to you know to trigger it and then maybe it only goes it's intermittent it comes in and goes out real quick well with that latch function as soon as it you know, does the opposite of whatever function you're in, the alarm goes off, you know that something's wrong instead of it just beeping for a second. And then once it, the circuit comes back to normal function, it would stop. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, so let me ask you, and I'm not going to ask you to quote pricing because I never do, because I understand there's mm -hmm. a lot of factors that go on pricing, but how does the price compare to a regular tone? I mean, is, is it the same, a little bit more expensive, a lot more expensive? I, I don't know. It, I, I don't know the exact pricing of it myself. But I know it is a little bit more expensive than, say, a standard 701K-G6A, which is a, that's a whole lot of numbers and letters now for that product. Right, right. We, the, the, the bread and butter tone and probe kit, it's a and little bit more just because there's more functions on that. I was going to say, you're, you're getting more features and, and you yeah. typically pay for more features. Mm -hmm. um, how resilient is this thing? I mean, I know I've got I've got an old toner and probe that I bought when I was 18 years old. And if you could tell by the gray in my goatee and mustache, <laughs> it's a few years old. And that thing still it still chugs along, no problems. Yeah. How's the resiliency on, on this? As far as I know, from what I've seen, it's as it's as durable as any of the other tone generators that we may manufacture. You know, very body, single circuit board, you know, very, very ruggedly built. Right. And one of the things I didn't know, and you, we, we, we kind of talked about this before we started the interview. Evidently, this thing has been around for a while. I thought I just learned about it. And it just goes to show you should be a constant <laughs> learner in our industry. Uh, how long did you say this thing's been around? Um, per, well, we were just to trace back on some history. Um, the product was originally manufactured. The company name was Progressive Electronics. Um, even though we're called Tempo now, we were a privately owned company back in as of 1999. Uh, Progressive and what was then known as Tempo, uh, well, we were temp a Tempo, a communications company, Tempo Research. We were all bought by a larger company called Textron and folded into one of the companies they own named Greenlee. So the 620K was around then, and that was 2000. And I know from talking with the product managers there that it had at least been around since 1995. So we're talking 26, 27 years at least. So that actually just learned something new just, just a second ago. I didn't realize <laughs> that Progressive was Tempo. I, yes. I know I know Progressive. I, I've heard of them for years and years and years. And, and Tempo it just seemed to me like I just... I'll be honest here. The first time I heard a tempo when was when a peer of mine came to work for you guys. So oh. I had to go. Look, I had to go look them up. I'm like, <laughs> who, who the heck's this company? I was like, oh, they make. The, I didn't realize that they were progressive. That makes a lot of sense. Yes. It makes a lot of sense. So, um, what other new cool things are, are is tempo working on that maybe might be coming out that you guys want to highlight or talk about? Well, I mentioned to you that we're we're starting to get into wireless cell phone testing. We have a specific, we have a product. Uh, it's called Air Scout Mobility. It's a software program that works in conjunction with a, an, an unlocked 
cell phone, which we would also sell. Um, and it tests the range and coverage of cell towers. Um, there's the products that are out now, um, or, or before we introduced this, were very expensive and very um, uh, manufacturer specific. Whereas with this one, you just need an Android phone that's been unlocked. You get the software. And also with the competitors, you buy one product, it's on that one product. And to get licenses for any other products for other techs to use, you have to buy a whole nother set. With this one, the license to use the software can be transferred amongst other products. So you can have several technicians. One technician can use the software over here. When he's done, another technician with another set of phones can test the coverage over here. So you don't have to buy the way, like I said, the way the competitors have it structured now is you have to buy individual, every technician has to have their own software and hardware. This one is one set of software that works with multiple units of hardware. Right. So, and, so if somebody wants to learn more about Tempo and the stuff that they make, where would they go? You would go to www.tempocom, T-E-M-P-O-C-O-N, tempocom.com. And you have all your different products and you know, all the different industries to listen to? Yep. Yep. If there's a products tab there and you'll hit the products tab and you'll get the categories of everything we, we sell into. Hey, hey, do I, do I get extra credit for having well, one of these at my desk? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually this is yours. Um, Troy loaned yes. it to me. I'm supposed to make a video about it and I'm supposed to send it back to him. So when you, uh -huh. when you see Troy or, 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 you know, let him know, I'm going to get that video done. I promise. I promise. <laughs> and I'll I got to get back to him. So. Well, well, David, it's a pressure having you on today. And, and I certainly hope that maybe you will agree to do another interview later about that wireless tester. Because like I said, I get tons of questions about wireless testing. And and again, that's another one of my weak areas. You can't know everything about the telecommunications industry. You can, you know, you got your little pocket and you need something else. You bring in the experts like, like, like you and Troy and some of the other people out there. So. It was a pleasure having you on, and uh, I hope we have to have you back soon. I'd be glad to talk about any of our products, Chuck. Thanks for having me. Perfect. Enjoyed it. That's it for this episode of today's podcast. We hope you were able to learn something. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Also, leave a rating so we can help even more people learn about telecommunications. Until next time, be safe.